welcome back. So this has been quite a long while coming because unfortunately for a long while I'd lost the footage of the build you just watched. So this is our finished enclosure for our Javan Bantang. So here we have our two female animals. They're a mother and a daughter pair and they're sharing with our white pelican who had been living in the old flamingo house. That's gone now to make way for a new path that's going to lead you know, just connect the zoo up a bit more. So here's the enclosure. We also have the bull, who's the father of one of our females, off show in this specialised bull enclosure here. It's quite an elaborate complex we've tried to lay out. Um, so that, you know, in the future this can be adapted to a variety of animals. Perhaps, you know, that bull enclosure can become an enclosure for a separate species or something like that. What we have over here is what I did in between building the Banteng enclosure and the Komodo dragon in and um, recording this. So this whole area is going to be our new Indonesian section. And this is the kind of crowning jewel of that, the Komodo dragon house. Here we are. This is so expensive to do. So we're going to have a look at this now in addition to our finished Bantang enclosure. So this is just the structure of the Dragon House. I haven't recorded building it, unfortunately, because it was so fiddly and I was just changing so much to get it right. But this is kind of it. This is the lovely front way. And it's all on this raised up walkway inside. So we're going to have a look here. So this is going to be an enclosure for Javan mouse deer, the outside part of the enclosure, which follows through inside, connected by this little tunnel here. And this is going to be the main on-show outdoor enclosure for our Komodo dragons. Obviously, we're a tropical climate, so we're able to keep them outside, you know, for a good portion of the year. I think it should be year-round, actually. They just need... Uh, the opportunity to get inside out of the elements into some heated conditions, you know, maybe when the temperature drops at night, for instance. So we're going to head up the walkway now. So we haven't put any of the foliage down or any of the animals, but this is all going to be, you know, lush and tropical and sculpted, so you can look down on the dragons here. This is the indoor enclosure for our male dragon, who we're waiting on. His name is Padar. And this is the indoor enclosure for our female dragon, Rinka. And this is the indoor part of the mouse deer enclosure. And over here we have a space that I'm not sure what we're going to do with it yet. It might become an aviary. It might become perhaps another reptile exhibit. Just, just someone else to look at. I think some nice tall trees in here maybe. Um, perhaps for Hornbill. If we ever get some hornbill, that's one idea I've had. But for now it's empty. Let's head back down. So we'll have a look around the inside of the Banting enclosure in a moment. For now, we're going to double back and have a look at the rest of the Dragon House. So we've got both of the indoor enclosures is serviced by this little keeper area here where we're going to have... Uh, food prep station and monitoring so you can see here you can get up to the edge of the female indoor enclosure and it's the same around the other side for the male and this is the female's outdoor enclosure it's smaller just right for her so obviously with komodo dragons they're quite complicated to keep together because they're largely solitary, but they'll come together to breed. And if there's a you know a big meal, they can be quite garish. They can get on quite well. But it's not really safe in in a zoo to keep two dragons of different sizes together. So if I had two males, I'd probably just build one enclosure for them. Or if I had two females, I'd do the same because then they'll be similar size. They wouldn't really see each other as a threat. But with the male and the female, they're going to be, you know, the male's going to be bigger than the female. It's best to give them the opportunity to get away from each other, even though our long-term plans, obviously, would be to have them all mixed together. 
And then, of course, if if and when we had babies, we'd have to build uh, another enclosure to house the hatchlings, because adult dragons will quite happily cannibalise baby dragons, and to compensate for that, baby Komodo dragons are excellent climbers, whilst adult dragons are quite poor. So that's one idea, actually, we could have over here. There's a exhibit for baby dragons, if we ever get some in the future. So I'll head around the back of the bouncing enclosure now. So what's going on behind here, very exciting, is our build for our proboscis, proboscis monkey enclosure, which is very exciting. I can't wait to get that up and running. But first of all, we've got to finish off the dragons, obviously. So here's the bullpen for our bull. We've got to keep them separate from the girls because obviously one of them's is daughter and we don't want it to risk any inbreeding. There's inside his stable. So this is the stable area for them both. Indoor area for the bull. Indoor area for the two cows. Oh, Pelican's got him in here. They can kind of just wander throughout the enclosure wherever they wherever they like. We've got the little pool here. Again, with the pelicans, this is just another temporary measure. We're not going to keep the pelicans in here permanently. I'd prefer to have the pelicans mixed in with our hippo. But that's, that's an enclosure build very, very much far down the line. But for now, I'll leave you with our fabulous bantang. Sorry about that. I'll leave you with our bantang. And the first part of our Indonesian expedition. Thanks for watching.